we will be starting the session in couple of minutes uh, so you all are requested to come at your place at the end of the session we will be taking your queries so in that case kindly raise your hand or send the question over the chat box our speaker dr rabi shankar bhatta has joined with us we welcome you sir Uh, before the session begin i would like to introduce our speaker dr rabi shankar bhatta graduated in pharmacy and post graduated in pharmaceutics from nagpur university and phd from jawarlal nehru university he has 10 year of experience in various academics and pharmaceutical industries currently he is working as scientist pharmaceutics Pharmaco Kinetics and Metabolism Division in CSIR Central Drug Research Institute, Lucknow, and involved in new drug discovery research. His research interest includes bioanalysis, metabolite characterization, cytochrome profiling, pharmaco kinetics, and formulation development of NCEs. He is actively involved in lead identification, preclinical and clinical development. He is co-inventors of web-based de-replication tool that is www.tmsdatabase.org for the identification of plant secondary metabolites. He has guided thesis of PhD, postgraduate student, and have several publication in reputed journals. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you, and good afternoon to all. So, um. The presentation I will be covering is on the pharmacokinetic aspects. Being a pharmacy background, I mostly relate to the drug discovery and its application. For me also, it is a new thing to learn to see the application of pharmacokinetics in the forensic sciences. And I hope so. I will try to bring an example on very commonly used toxicants. that is alcohol so hopefully we we'll like to see that uh the pharmacokinetic experts how it helps in the forensic science so with that i just upload my presentation i believe uh, everyone is from uh, is a faculty or is, is anyone from the pharmacokinetic background over here most of them are faculties and and from forensic sciences laboratories okay ma'am they are also from medical background medical colleges okay so uh i think i think my slides is visible yes yes sir okay so uh the first of all uh, just a quick uh, terminology uh, introduction that is the pharmacokinetics which generally terms as the kinetics of drug that means the movement of drug inside the body so that is in other term what is called the what the body does to the drug it's not the what the drug does to the body drug does to the body means what are the efficacy or activity that it is responding to like if we have an uh, analgesic so the pain goes away but in turn the body is actually dealing with the drug because drug is an is an exogenous compound it's not an endogenous compound drug what uh, the body what does to the drug is it try to eliminate from uh, it tries to get rid of it under this process uh it have several processes goes on so it is uh, we will we will we'll talk to that but where uh, pharmacokinetics is important is we understand that what is the time duration in which the drug will be there in the systemic circulation or in the body and because of the presence of the drug in the systemic circulation of the body you see some kind of response which may be toxic which may be your if you, your desired response so the pharmacokinetics what we normally do is we study the disposition of the drug when we say the disposition of the drug that means 
there is four processes involved absorption distribution metabolism and excretion so what is this processes are this processes determines how and how the body how the drug is going inside the body suppose for example when you administer the drug by oral route of administration so the first it goes to the stomach and from the stomach you need it has to be absorbed so when you are taking a tablet which is a solid form transformed to a liquid form that is a dissolution we say it is dissolving in the liquid forming a molecular liquid form and this molecular liquid form interacting with the gastric membrane and from the membrane it reaches to the crosses the membrane and reaches to the blood circulation this so this process from the site of administration to the systemic circulation or the site of activity is this transfer of this drug molecule is known as absorption the next comes the distribution once it is absorbed from the site of administration is to just the systemic circulation that is the blood the blood will distribute throughout the body taking the drug along with it so drug, the the drug molecules or the toxicants distribute throughout the body and this distribution parameters is very important which determine how the response will be like like a person taking a drug like suppose an alcohol it's taking uh, its ingestion it's an oral route of administration but the activity or effect is, is is actually is in the brain so the from the stomach to brain transportation is taking place what we term term as a distribution phase of a molecule next comes the metabolism so the body and identify these as exogenous systems and in fact the endogenous compounds also completely change the change, change the structure of the molecule by based on certain reactions which is enzymatic in nature and these are terms as a metabolism that is conversion of one form of chemical to the another form of chemical so in this process the whatever the chemical form change has taken place results in the activity either it could be efficacious or it enhances the activity or it could be possible that it reduces the effect of it so this is the metabolism there are many things like heroin to morphine so there is a metabolism happening for in which you are seeing some kind of add additive properties or cns activity the next the metabolism is the excretion in the metabolism process process one form is changed to another form but it is not actually going out of the system an excretion is the irreversible transfer of the material of the drug out of the system of circulation so that the body get rid of the compound or the drug permanently so this is the excretion the metabolism and excretion generally reduces the effect of one drug and finally <clears throat> effect of all these parameters absorption distribution metabolism and excretion determine the pharmacological response which could be toxicity or depending on the uh, which could be desired effect combinedly metabolism and excretion is known as elimination process so this is a typical on the right hand side is a typical plasma concentration time profile in which when we take the drug the drug concentration usually increases reaches to the side this is the highest concentration which we call as c max follow this is the absorption phase absorption phase tends to increase the drug concentration in the system of circulation followed by a post absorption phase which is the distribution of the molecule distribution tends to decrease the blood concentration uh, of the drug but however it is not eliminated in the from the system from the body it has been distributed to the different pockets or different organs and followed by once the distribution is going on and the absorption is completely stopped because it is not there any uh, the concentration uh, all the concentration that was available at the site of administration has reached the system of circulation it is distributed finally a phase will come known as a elimination phase the decrease in the drug concentration is due to the metabolism and the excretion process in this one the excretion process is always is there in the the background right from the absorption but the rate of elimination or the excretion is very small 
then the rate of absorption of the availability of the compound. So generally the terminal phase which we known as the rate of elimination or the elimination phase. So all these processes, A, which is known as commonly ADME, that is absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, can be represented and calculated from this curve, which is a con drug concentration versus time. So pharmacokinetic uh, process. Uh, sir, slides are not moving. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not moving the slide. I'm in okay, the same. Okay, okay. Sorry, <laughs> so students are ask, uh, participants are asking. That's okay. why I just... Okay. Uh, can you see the uh, cursor? No, sir. Uh, my cursor uh, pointer or something? No, sir. Only the first slide is showing. Can you see the now? No, sir. Let me just see. Can you see the pointer? No, sir. Okay, uh, let me just stop sharing and I share the complete window, then I think it will be there. Okay, sir. No, some technical. I'm not able to share the entire screen. Now it is showing. I uh, yeah, but uh, I wanted to show. My yes, cursor as a pointer. Is it visible? My uh, cursor, a red color dot. No, sir. Okay. Anyway, then I will. Uh, it's a no issue. Just... Okay. So at the right hand side, uh, at the bottom a graph is there. What you can see. So pharmacokinetics generally starts with this graph and ends with this graph. So what we do is we generally try to map the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion process. These are the process. We, we, we convert this process into the mathematical term to get at some kind of quantitable parameter and to compare and do our analysis. So these parameters, what, where the, where the uh, applications is? like how much is the highest drug concentration reaching depending on the drug concentration you will have some kind of pharmacological response the response doesn't come uh, <coughs> doesn't come without having any drug given or any without giving uh, without any uh, compound that is present in the system in circulation or the site of action so generally for uh, for to have the onset of action you need a minimum effective concentration so once the, it is administered and it reaches to the minimum effective concentration, you will get some kind of response. The same way in the alcohol case, when you get a small dose of alcohol, you will not get any response. But as the dose increases, as the time increases, not only the dose, as the time increases, because, because from the site of absorption to the site of efficacy or the activity, you require some amount of time to travel. So as it, the concentration is above the onset of action, you get to see some kind of responses. This responses remain still the drug concentration remain in the systemic circulation. And if the drug concentration is much, much higher, then either you get to see some different kind of pharmacological response that you can, you can term is, as a toxic response. Over a period of time, the alcohol will, or the drug will be eliminated from the systemic circulation, whereby the response will also decrease. So a time will come when, when the effect due to a particular toxicants will be, will be, will be out or, or will be ceases because of the elimination of the drug or drug or toxicant from the systemic circulation. So then we'll have an elimination phase. The next slide is a typical, what I have shown the curve in the, in the left hand side 
it's a, like one curve going upward and going downward this is what happens usually when you have a single dose administration but generally what will happen if you repeatedly take after a certain period of time because many of the drug abusers when their response is getting lowered because of the elimination they take an another dose to have to maintain the same response and they keep on taking the drug on a certain interval so how will the drug concentration will change so depending on this the left hand side the right hand side curve actually shows the drug concentration was going upward then it was first dose it was decreasing then the second dose was taken and drug concentration now reaches much much higher than the first dose the curve on the second you second peak you see is higher than the first one third peak is even higher than the second peak and subsequently if it continue to take a drug and a certain period of time a phase will come where the drug concentration doesn't reach beyond a certain point and it will maintain a range what we call as css or the steady state plasma concentration so now the application of whether the steady state plasma concentration is within the therapeutic or is with is within the toxic range that is where our application comes in fact if you know if you if a person says that i have been taking this uh, drug toxicants probably for five hours six hours and i have taken three doses three picks five picks so you can estimate because this is mathematical in nature you can estimate what will be the drug concentration at uh, at seven hours when he has taken taken four picks at an intervals of roughly two to three uh, three hours so that is where you can estimate that you, what with the concentration after that uh, 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 you can you can estimate whether that is a main reason to have an adverse effect or a very toxic response that you are observing or the response is minimum or the response uh, or the death or something is not due to the cause of alcohol overdosing or the due to the cause of the abuse drug overdosing this is a typical representation of admi profile where uh, the absorption gives rise to the drug concentration in the bloodstream, the distribution and the metabolism, the metabolites are there. And finally, from the bloodstream, the elimination will take place. So this is the absorption that I have already explained. But generally, absorption depends on the route of administration. If it is an oral route of administration, so it has to undergo the various processes of absorption from the GI tract. And our GI tract is not a single system. It's a heterogeneous system comprising of stomach, duodenum, ileum, jejunum, whereby there is a change in the luminal content, luminal pH, physiochemical parameters are different. Like in duodenum, bites are released. So the absorption process is relatively higher in the duodenum process. And, and you have cologne area where the transit time is very slow. Even the insoluble drug particles, which reaches to the ileum and cologne portion, stays there for a very prolonged period of time and whereby the absorption process may continue. And secondly, there are metabolites in the lumen regions which may transform this drug into some other forms. Now, these other forms which may be toxic and are, are observed in the systemic circulation. So it's a very heterogeneous system. So root of administration is an understanding of is very important because it has directly implication in the pharmacokinetics. That is the amount of drug present in the system circulation, and so do the efficacy or activity or activity observed. The next is the like intravenous route of administration. So it is a directly the drug concentration route to the reaches to the vein. So this is a there is no uh, process of absorption. So it's directly the drug concentration reaches the vein. It will immediately distribute by the simple diffusion process, and it will it will distribute an elimination process from the kidney or the liver will start. Generally, the mostly the elimination happens from the kidney or the fecal route of administration uh, excretion or the metabolism. That I will come to the later part. Now. There are other route of administration, other route of administration, route of administration where the absorption processes are different, like inhalation route, like cigarette smoking, tobacco, 
so this is another route from where it goes to the lungs and from lungs because of the partitioning of the air the the toxicants are absorbed and reaches system circulation from system circulation it can go to the brain even like like uh, and the, uh, the placing the tobacco in the mouth whereby it reaches the mucosal membrane and it has a direct air uh, directly reaching the system circulation and even like inhalation route the transportation of the toxicants of the drug of abuse to the brain in that case is very high as compared to the oral because there is a connection between the uh, the nasal route as well as the brain the nasal to brain transport system is there the blood circulation is there which which immediately takes the drug concentration to the brain and the, and the response is observed so the absorption process differs and there are multiple factors affecting the absorption like if we have if you take the oral route whether the in the oral route whether the, it was empty stomach or the filled stomach empty stomach the absorption will be very high when it is a filled stomach the absorption process will be very high because it gets diluted with the food and the absorption is relatively slower after the absorption has takes place specifically from the oral route of administration generally the term comes is the first pass metabolism that is if it ha it will encounter immediately the metabolic processes that is there so amount of drug that is administered doesn't reach the completely to the system of circulation so it has to undergo the barrier of absorption undergo the barrier of metabolism in case of oral administration most of the drug will be destroyed in the gut will not be absorbed and thirdly they destroyed by the gut wall or they destroyed by the liver and the very fraction of the drug molecule that has been administered will reach the systemic circulation after reaching the systemic circulation then the distribution comes the distribution process in which it will go to the various organs the blood will take the drug to the organs and the organ is also separated in mathematically into the two phase one is the tissue compartment one is the extracellular fluid compartment so depending on the physiochemical nature of the compound some of the drug molecules probably go and distribute very high to the particular tissues and not to the everyone so it's a heterogeneous distribution although the blood is taken to the every organ depending on the affinity towards certain organ the drug will actually remain there in fact interestingly uh, like like you say uh, like antibiotics if you see the antibiotics all antibiotics have uh, suppose aminoglycoside antibiotics they have same mode of action but different application one is used for uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, gi tract some kind of throat infection others may be used for skin infection other could be used for um, uti or something like that the reason being de depend it's the same pharmacological uh, mechanism of the response but different application because the drug actually distribute heterogeneously to the different organs some antibiotics probably have some very high affinity towards the skin so it has been used for the skin infections other same class of antibiotics is used for the throat infections although the spectrum of the microbes that they cover might be the same but the application in vivo application the clinical application changes so in this way um, the distribution of the drug changes so this could be a uh, importance to the forensic also where to see your your toxicants where to see the drug which organ you are seeing after a uh, after in the postmortem or after a death or something has occurred so it is what i have explained so the distribution depends on the various factors like partitioning across the membrane binding to the tissue component binding to the blood component like rbc and the plasma protein these are the blood component generally in the blood it is not homogeneously distributed the drug is distributed either in the plasma protein and rbc these are two different uh, different compartments in the blood so in the rbc is also we try to see whether it is a whole rbc or the surface and so however depending on that uh, it, it 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 affects the uh, the total drug concentration in the body as an affect the response and the physiological volume another important point i have missed the physiological volume uh, this is is very important uh, there is one parameters like drug concentration in the plasma and the drug concentration in the body so among the drug concentration in the plasma and the blood compartment the blood has a specific volume 
so when you estimate we cannot estimate the drug in the total amount of drug in the whole body we cannot go each and every part of the body take the tissue extract the drug and do the analysis like hplc or lcms analysis so it's not possible so what we do is we take the fluid that is easily replaceable and collectible that is the blood we estimate the drug concentration and physiological volumes we know that in a, in a, in a person of 60 or 70 kg what is the volume of blood he has she or he or she has so based on the volume we can estimate that what is the amount of drug amount of drug is present in in the systemic circulation and from that you can actually correlate the amount of drug that is present in the whole body and a whole body is taken as a volume you can estimate the whole body and that will make, make corresponds to the amount that is ingested into the into the subject so all the body fluid which is referred the total body water in which a drug can be dis dissolved can be roughly divided into three compartment intravascular that is a blood plasma found within the blood vessel in the interstitial fluid that is fluid surrounding the cell and intercellular fluid within the cell so generally where the drug is distributed so this becomes this be, if you have understanding of the drug molecule and you know if you have the prior data to it then then it can be informed to the forensics to what is the tissue or the where to, to collect which tissues to be collect and where to do the analysis to actually estimate the drug concentration probably drug is not available in the system circulation like probably the drugs which has uh, which is mostly targeted delivery system or like alendronate it's a classic example that we can uh, give in the drug alendronate is used for osteoporosis it has a severe side effect of gastric irritation and generally is to a long term administration is required. But once you administer the alendronate within few minutes, it's not observed in the system circulation. But the drugs, the same alendronate goes to the bone and it remains in the bone for 10 to 15 years. So if a person is taking that drug, you cannot estimate the drug concentration in the systemic circulation. So you have to probably know what is the distribution profile or distribution affinity of the drug and go to the particular organ and take and analyze so that you can understand whether that chemical form has been administered into uh, the subject. So this is generally uh, the calculated physiological volume. The vascular volume is used three liters, nine liters, but there is a lot of variabilities there uh there is this is general terminology but we have a lot of variability in actual volume of distribution of a person then interestingly most of the drug abuse has to do with the brain so responses uh, are with the brain whether uh, the responses uh, for some kind of sedative effect psychotic effect so the drug has to distribute in the brain and the brain physiology is such a way uh, it is there it had got a tight junction around the blood vessels which is which we call is a blood brain barrier so any drug which has been administered which has to cross that blood brain barrier so majority of the drug molecule usually doesn't cross that blood brain barrier it is stopped into that so that the brain doesn't receive any exogenous which could be harmful to it but there are some caffeine or any toxic and heroin and MD because of the some uh, transportation which could be the transportation transporters involved to it or due to because the physiochemical nature of this molecule is such that it can easily penetrate uh, to the brain so so these are the molecules which generally distribute to the brain distribute to the brain and give some kind of response so plasma protein binding this is an another important parameters usually you have two types of system in the plasma is so a plasma protein and the, and the fluid without protein sir, sorry to uh, interrupt the slides not going on so at what slide you are there uh, there is second slide oh my god oh my god yes sir i moved on now now it's moving now it's moving it's Yes, sir. So I was in a slide show. Did you see this slide? Yes, plasma protein binding. Okay. But when I am moving to the slide, can you see this slide? Mm. Now the next slide. 
No, no, sir, no, sir. Okay, I don't know what is happening, but if I move to the slides show over here, I think we are missing something. So what I will do is try to minimize that. Okay, no problem. I think now it is quite big. Yes, sir. Yes, it's moving, sir. It's moving. Oh, my God. So anyway, I was telling absorption, distribution, and the plasma protein binding. So the plasma protein binding, this is some kind of surfactant or cushion when a drug is administered. Generally, most of the molecules that we administer are water insoluble still it goes to the blood the magic lies with the answer with the plasma protein these proteins are the high molecular weight proteins has got a several adsorption site which actually adsorb drug molecule and they they move along with it in the distribution phase in the blood so what happens when it reaches to certain organ some of the drug molecule will leave the plasma protein and will go to the go to the target site or the target organ and where because of the partitioning of it because of the physiochemical nature of the drug molecule or the affinity of the drug molecule for that area so this is the one of the factors plasma protein binding which is responsible for the distribution of the drug in the body so generally uh, what happens is uh, the drug which are water soluble in nature will have very less plasma protein binding and drug which will have lipophilic in nature will have a high plasma protein binding. So if a drug molecule that binds to the plasma protein, it generally tends to give a lower response, lower pharmacological response or a prolonged pharmacological response. So this is a parameter which affect the distribution of the drug. Now comes after distribution is comes the elimination. Elimination is the irreversible removal of the, of the parent drug from the body. So what is happening is it has two components. One is excretion. Excretion is a one-way movement. It's going out of the body. And another is the drug metabolism, whereby it is changing the chemical form of the drug. So changing chemical form could actually reduce the response. So changing the chemical form of the drug, the body does this one because of the because of the reason that it wishes to change the form it wishes to change to more water soluble kind of thing so that can be easily removed from the urinary route of excretion generally urinary route of excretion is the one which eliminates the drug, maximum amount of drugs from the body <clears throat> this is a major route of excretion so but the compounds are generally lipophilic in nature so they have to be transformed chemically to a water soluble form form and that body does with some kind of metabolic reaction which is usually phase one or phase two reaction that will come the classical is the heroin which is marketed as non-addictive but one of the metabolites that is morphine <coughs> and the heroin converts the morphine to get a very good analgesic activity and usually this metabolite metabolize in the liver so this is the metabolism so sometimes metabolism decreases the response sometimes metabolism is responsible for the having some kind of response and in this case like heroin generally most of the addictive drugs uh, available have been started with a good faith by the pharmaceutical companies and they made a hell of history um, this uh, problematic to the society and uh, like heroin afim and all this are very good analgesic property but they have an additiveness into a, a additive property as well so this is the phase one reaction the phase one reaction is generally tends to be oxidation reduction of the hydrolysis and they, they tends to to have a functional group like OH, SH, and NH2 or CWH group. And these metabolites are, uh, they, they tend to make it water soluble. So the polar group is introduced. And another types of metabolism is there that is known as phase two metabolism, which, in, which actually conjugates certain uh, chemical moiety like glucuronide, sulfate, acetyl, 
amino acids such so inclusion of this moiety is a glucuronide is a big structure molecule and having several polar groups which makes water soluble so and, and uh, the the objective of the body is the first thing is it to uh, to to block the reactive site of the compound reactive side of the drug so that it doesn't affect the, it doesn't give any pharmacological response secondly make it as a water soluble so that it can be easily removed from the systemic circulation so these are the some of the reaction forensically we tends to probably we administer alcohol but we may not see the alcohol in the system circulation but in the elimination phase we may see the metabolite alcohol glucuronidation or alcohol sulfate so 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 an understanding this metabolism and essentially identifying this metabolism by any by any biological tool will will give you the response that although the drug is not there the metabolite is there that means the drug was uh, administered at the some point of time so this is a generally schematic representation whatever we give we give by intravenous route or by oral route of administration the all the drug molecule has to go through the liver and the liver is is one of the one of the major organ for the metabolism the next one is the excretion the excretion is the removal or uh, the process of body elimination of unwanted substance or the drug so there are various route of excretion is there uh biliary or renal route is there a fecal route is there there are excretion uh by sweat there is excretion by salivary excretion is there by by breath it's a excretion is there so the body tends to eliminate by whatever route is there so generally we need to understand the uh, understand the, the the excretion process so that we can understand uh, at what point of time the 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 activity will cease the pharmacological response due to the drug of abuse will decrease and and which elimination route is it is following and whether can we analyze the drug by its estimation of the drug and by that uh, elimination route for example in case of alcohol it is eliminated through the breath so a breath analyzer is there to estimate the drug concentration uh, alcohol concentration similarly there are there are drugs which are fetal route of excretion like testosterone abuse or something of hormonal abuse you use generally urine uh, as a uh, uh, as a biofluid to estimate uh, estimate the drug concentration generally this is a schematic deck if you if you show this to the pharmacokinetic experts the term this is generally we uh, we simplify the body into some of these kind of boxes and this is very easy but these types of boxes are generally used to uh, to to derive a mathematical equation to see to estimate the drug concentration that if a dose of x is administered drug concentration at at, at at x at time t what will the drug concentration will be there at time suppose t24 or 24 hours so what will the drug concentration after 12 hours generally these are schematic diagrams are made whereby we we try to show the drug which is administered like the left hand side first box where the drug is been administered so there is an absorption process it goes to systemic circulation and there is a distribution so drug in the tissues and for the in the drug in the tissues then we get see some kind of pharmacological response whereas from the systemic circulation from the central box there is a elimination process always going on at a certain period of time the all the drug from the systemic circulation will be eliminated now comes to the uh, pharmacokinetic application the forensic estimation i think this is an unending topic but i'll i have chosen to give one of the example that is alcohol so forensic toxicology and the development of chemical methods to identify the poisonous substance in the biological for biological fluid and this is uh, without an estimation of the drug in the biological fluid uh, we cannot do any pharmacokinetic study so pharmacokinetic estimation so the first thing so we need a robust biological tool which may be lcms hplc or whatever it is uh, to estimate the drug concentration in the biology in the in the biofluid so uh, 
so this estimation after the compound then we can find out the reasoning behind why there is a sudden or unnatural or suspicions death is there so if suspicions death is there so and you find out the sudden toxicant is there at what level the toxicant was was it at the toxic range or it was a normal like in case of alcohol which is a toxicant which is a popular drink available um, in the society which is a society manic also but however there is a limit so if it is within the limit then probably the person is in fully aware aware of the environment or the surroundings but there is a small quantity of alcohol always produced in the body that is especially in the colon portion of the uh, in the in this intestine but that doesn't affect the pharmacological response so generally alcohol in the public health as you all know and a lot of crimes are their crimes is due to the under the effect of alcohol or due to the alcohol specifically the addicts when uh, when they cannot stay with the, without alcohol they tends to do some kind of responses uh, some kind of so behavior which is socially not accepted so what <clears throat> so generally uh, the research has been reported from 1833 to and the majorly uh, the, the breakthrough on the pharmacokinetics has been with the dr francis uh, where he had say he had estimated that less than 10 percent of the alcohol is excreted in the breath urine and sweat so this became a tool later on to estimate the alcohol concentration Later on, on with Mark in 1920, a biological method for estimation the systemic circulation came. Detailed uh, study was done in 1922 where the pharmacokinetic has been reported. And after this, the alcohol or drunkenness, which is underlying factor in the crime, became very easy because now you know uh, the uh, concentration of the drug alcohol at the time or the crime was conducted. So whether they whether this was under the influence of the psychotic influence of the alcohol or not, or so that can be estimated. So there are various law and after the pharmacokinetic, after the levels has been decided, what is the toxic level and what is the therapeutic level. In fact, alcohol was used initially as a therapeutics uh, and cold cuff situations. Uh, so uh, the physiological laws started to emerge when you understand the, what is the dose that can that can should be administered for therapeutic therapeutic value and what is the drug concentration reaching in the systemic circulation. So with Mac 1932, he has uh, done a remarkable job. Some factors he has calculated, which I will come to later on. This is still used to estimate drug concentration, uh, 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 like previous time or the time with the back extrapolation of the time so one of the parameters that is is the alcohol blood concentration this is the time commonly known as bac you will find this terminology in several of the literatures uh, this is the main responsible uh, this is the one which is uh, under the law which is considered the what is the bac of the, the subject the alcohol can be taken by several route of administration it can be intravenously it can be taken it can be orally it can be taken so but whatever route that you has been taken but important point is what is the blood concentration what is the alcohol concentration in the blood so and this depends on the various factors and that depends the dose that has been taken depends on the what type of beverage is consumed it's a cocktail or mocktail whatever it is it is consumed the fed state or fastest state the speed of drinking speed of drinking is in terms like speed of dosing so you increase the dosing rate so drug consume blood concentration of alcohol will shoot up rapidly you decrease the dosing rate you do you you drink uh, drinking of the alcohol in a very sip manner in a slow manner the concentration will rise slowly so, and the, what is the per physiological condition of the subject, whether it is age, 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 sex, weight, and what is the body volume. So all these factors and these factors has been very systematically reported by Jonas in 2016. So variability in the ADME process. Uh, so the variability in the ADME is profound effect so alcohol is something that goes to the blood-brain barrier and act as a depressant. 
Uh, one more thing, can you see my cursor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, alcohol has a multiple effect, which is the dose dependent. At the very low dose, it might be stimulating, happy mood enhancement. When the dose increases a bit, a person may think that a shivering or uh, a shivering condition, a coldness may be felt. And when it decreases more, it may be depressant. So, uh, Alcohol has a several pharmacological effect depending on the dose that has been administered. And ethanol induced impairment of body function depends on the blood alcohol concentration reached. So it, de it doesn't depend on which route of administration is, is, uh, is, is, is being used, but majorly we have to, in you have to correlate with the crime scene. So what is the blood concentration that has been reached? So in India, BAC limit is 30 mg per 100 ml. Sometimes it is also represented as 30 mg percent. In England, it is BAC limit is 80 mg per percent. Probably the people in the England can tolerate more alcohol as compared to the people in India. So the limit has set, and these setting of this limit depends on the thousands and thousands of data. So various PK calculation systems has been uh, has been devised in the which has has application the forensic and the legal medicine to forward or backward extrapolation of the person BSC. Forward or backward extrapolation means if a crime has occurred in the back, what was the drug, blood blood alcohol concentration at that period of time uh, time, and you are taking the blood blood sample at the uh, after the crime has occurred. So, so correlation of that, the back calculation, you have to do it mathematically. And that's where the pharmacokinetics comes into the picture. It calculates. It is, I, initially, I've, I've told you it's a mathematical expression. So you can, with the time value, you can put and you will get some kind of uh, uh, reading. So alcohol is a psychoactive substance. The degree of impairment is a dose dependent that I have said, but now, uh, now in more quantitative terms, like if the BSC is 30 to 50 mg percent, mg percent is same as mg per 100 ml of blood. So it is commonly represented as mg percent. So if it is a 50 to 100, then the person becomes more talkative and mild euphoria, mood swinging, happy time. But when the BSC increases to 80 to 120 mg percent, then the outward sign of impairment reaction time slower, information processing is more difficult, motor coordination is impaired, slurred speech and segre segre and started grade might be seen. So in this condition, uh, your blood concentration is usually in the population is 80 to 120 mg per percent. Now, if it reaches to the 200 mg, if more dose has been administered, so then gross intoxication is observed, whereby it may not, he or the subject may not respond properly. But if it is increased to greater than 300 mg per, per person, this is where you have gone to the highly toxic range where it, the person may be unresponsive and the risk of dying due to the respiratory paralysis. So, so this is the importance where do you understand that we need to estimate the BSC and we correlate with the crime. So the behavioral changes reduce, reduce cognition, impaired psychomotor performance, it all depends on the BSC and BSC depends on the root of administration. So it is like oral, IV or rectal, empty stomach or fit stomach metabolism. Because of the individual variabilities there in the metabolism, some persons are fast metabolizers, some person are slow metabolism. Chronic drinking is a, one of the example which these type of person have an enhanced enzymatic enzyme. Because of the chronic, the chronic uh, drinking, the, the body has uh, privileged certain enzymes which actually detoxify or metabolize alcohol very fast. So a person is seeing the response at one peg 
for first five days may not see the response at one peak because uh, because its metabolism has enhanced and all the alcohol has been metabolized probably the per subject will require two picks of two picks of alcohol then after some time he or she may occur the subject may require three picks and so on the increases but there is a limit to this uh, this happens correlation to a limit that the body has a limit to a, to upregulate the enzyme after a certain point of time the amount of alcohol that is taken is higher than the amount the body can actually upregulate the certain enzymes so the leading by most of the alcohol will bypass the metabolism or the certain after certain fraction that is metabolized the rest of the fraction will immediately reach the system circulation from the system circulation it will reach the brain so a person may not respond to anything after drinking, uh, drinking suppose 750 ml of alcohol, but another person may reach, uh, reach to the toxic stage after drinking 750 ml because the BSC levels might reach to the 200 per mg percent because they have a difference in the metabolism or detoxifying process or ability. So the alcohol generally is converted to toxic aldehyde metabolite. This is the main thing. And this aldehyde is also again for the metabolized aldehyde dehydrogenase. And there is a variation of this enzyme or the, the population variability is there. In Indian population is also there in Indian and Caucasian, uh, Asian and Caucasians. And this, this generally uh, the major factors where the BSC has been designed differently in the different uh, population of the countries. So uh, this is the whole process, how it moves inside the body. So the absorption is the first order kinetics. The alcohol metabolism is usually at the rate of 10 to 30 mg percent per hour. So if if you if you take a 30 to 20 to 30 mg per 100 ml of blood, it can metabolize. But if you are taking higher mg's than 10 to 20, the body will not able to metabolize, and it will reach the systemic circulation and where it will reach the brain. The BSC exceeding 15 to 20 percent oxidative enzymes get saturated, and if the alcohol in the systemic circulation, one to three percent will go in the breath, urine, and sweat. Remaining 94 to 98 percent will go to the oxidative metabolism, and one of the toxic metabolites is acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde again metabolite to the acetic acid, and finally it is going out of the body as a carbon dioxide and water. And traces will go to the non-oxidative metabolism, that is a phase two metabolism like ethyl gluconide or ethyl sulfate, or fatty acid ester, uh, ethyl esters there or phosphatidyl uh, ethanol uh, is their conjugation. So these are the some of the other root, or other metabolic processes that is happening. And generally, these are the forensic importance because they're specifically uh, correlate with the ingestion of the alcohol. So, so this I have already talked. The another enzyme is CYP2E1. So this is a common metabolite, even in the smoking condition, this is upregulated. So it is upregulated in the environmental uh, pollutant also. And many of the drugs get metabolized with this enzyme. So there is a term known as drug alcohol interaction. So if a person trick, uh, taking a drug, particular drug under the therapeutic dose, but he or she, the subject has taken alcohol after the ingestion of the drug, so if alcohol is interfering the metabolism, specifically CYP2E1, the resultant will be that it will increase the drug concentration, although taken in this therapeutic dose in the systemic circulation, and which may give rise to some kind of toxic response. And this toxic response could be fatal also. So a healthy person, because of the drug, which is taken by as per the prescribed by the physicians, but due to in, in presence of alcohol turns to be very toxic and there is uh, acetaldehyde which is acetaldehyde dehydrogenase and one of the example that how uh, one of the examples of how a uh, methanol poisoning is treated methanol as you know is a toxic and uh, as compared to ethanol but methanol and ethanol has a drug drug interaction that means both are metabolized by the same metabolizing enzyme. 
So in case of methanol, methanol, ethanol poisoning and subsequently, uh, subsequently there could be a toxic metabolite aldehydes and all that ethanol in case of methanol poisoning ethanol has been administered so the so that ethanol in uh, with the competitive enzyme inhibition doesn't convert methanol to the toxic acetaldehyde and it is removed from the bloodstream by process of dilation At the same way like one alcohol is actually detoxifying or helping other alcohols to eliminate from the systemic circulation the same way Hindi mein keh le to kaate se kaate ko nikalna. So two metabolites like the ethanol glutonide and ethyl sulfate. These are the two metabolites of very importance as a forensic point of view because these metabolites are very slowly formed but they remain in the system or they remain in the body for a very prolonged period of time. The Tmax is longer and elimination is slower. This metabolite is formed at a certain period of time after taking the alcohol, but, the, but it has a very slow elimination from the, from the body. So this metabolite is particularly used, even the use for the, uh, for the person in the professionals where you cannot take alcohol before a certain period of time. And uh, in that case, whether you want to check whether the person has taken alcohol in the past or not, you that generally uh, the, 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 for the forensic estimation is the estimation of ethanol glucuronide or ethanol sulfate. So it, Hello. Sir, I will I will call you, sir. I am going to call you in five minutes, sir. A little later, half an hour later, sir. Yes, I am going to call you now, sir. Uh, sorry, uh, I think that is a problem with when you are sitting in the office. So anyhow, so the forensic importance is of this metabolism, this metabolite. So these are the biomarker to analyze the control abstinence in the postmortem also, whether the alcohol was formed after the death or ingestion before the death. If the alcohol is formed after the death due to the microbes that is in the, uh, uh, due to the microbes also, at that condition, ethanol glucuronide or ethanol sulfate will not be observed. But the death has occurred due to alcohol or the death has, or the alcohol was taken when the person was alive. In that condition, you will particularly Particularly, see this uh, metabolite, irrespective of whether in the postmortem fluid you see alcohol or not. Another important thing that uh, was previously discovered in 1983 is the volume of distribution. This is this value is a magical number. This has been calculated after several population studies, a huge number of population studies over a decade, and this parameter is generally which we say that volume distribution in the male is 0 0.069 and where the female is 0 0.6 meaning thereby the volume of distribution what is the volume of distribution is at what volume the alcohol is distributed inside the body so if the volume of distribution is higher uh, the, that means alcohol is distributed to the peripheral compartment rather than the central compartment and in the peripheral compartment there could be a site of response so if it is more in the systemic circulation, if the systemic circulation is not the site of response, then you will have a less amount of response and the more of elimination. So generally this parameters, which is actually the ratio of the amount of drug you are seeing in the plasma con concentration to the drug and to the dose that has been administered. So this is, uh, this is what the volume of distribution is. And this number has been estimated. So if a case comes, if the subject is male or female, depending on the on the calculation, you, you can we have we may use with the, these two values and to extrapolate or interpolate what is the BSC in a person. So uh, generally, because of the lower volume of distribution in the female, 
then 10 then the, the same dose of alcohol administration uh, female subjects may have higher amount of bsa as compared to the male similarly the elder patient elder per subjects which are leaner uh, persons they have a less total body water content the body volume so in that case the, the volume is less and the same dose has been administered they will have higher blood alcohol concentration Similarly, if an obese person is there where the volume is very high, uh, in that case, even the same dose, the blood, uh, blood concentration will be, blood alcohol concentration will be very less. So that is the reason probably if, uh, if the person with higher volume of uh, volume can actually tolerate a larger amount of alcohol as compared to the uh, person with the linear uh, body mass or body volume. Now, this is a typical uh, blood ethanol concentration versus time. This is a typical curve that is there where the drug concentration of the alcohol increases followed by a decrease in the drug concentration. So the, so the important parameter is the rate of disappearance of the blood. At what rate it is going on? This text tells you the, what is the elimination rate. Elimination means there is two process, excretion as well as metabolism. So what is the rate at which the alcohol is decreasing? The second is the volume of distribution. So this is the volume of distribution and of how it is distributed or what is the what is the physiological parameter of that subject or what is the what is the probable volume of distribution so with mark uh rear factor this is the factors that has been normalized that generally the male will have the volume distribution is 0 0.069 per centiliter per kg and the female will be at 0 0.06 this is the first estimation or approximation calculation we need to we take this and if we can because it is very difficult to actually physiologically estimate volume distribution especially in the case of and death or in the case of the postmortem. So we take an arbitrary value which has been calculated from the various power with a large number of data set in the population. And in case of alcohol, this is one of the good things is it's a zero order kinetics. That means it doesn't follow depending on the uh, on the concentration, the elimination rate is not dependent on the concentration of the alcohol present in the body. Whereas the absorption is the first order rate. If the if you would increase the dose, if you if you take concentrated alcohol, the absorption rate will be higher. If you take the dilute alcohol, the rate of absorption will be slower. But the elimination rate doesn't depend on the concentration. So elimination rate is pretty constant in case of alcohol. So forensically, then the reports that we generate is the amount of alcohol in the body. So that, that has to be correlated with the crime scene. Estimate the amount or the dose of alcohol ingested. So to calculate the volume of ingested, generally we take the amount, the weight of the person, the volume of distribution. And that, as the previous slides I've shown, you can take the arbitrary value depending on the subject, whether it's male or female. <coughs> and 0.8 plus the beta, this is the elimination into five. This elimination can be uh, can be arbitrarily you can, you can put it or you could, it can be estimated also. Generally, the rate of elimination is 10 to 20 mg percent is generally used in this calculation. So if uh, if you want to be very specific, the person is alive and is the custody and you can take the blood sample, then the ethanol elimination is calculated in that person is at one time point, you take the blood sample, estimate the alcohol concentration, and after certain time points, you take the blood sample, again estimate, difference in the drug concentration divided by time will give you the elimination rate. And you can put the elimination rate and you can estimate how much of the alcohol the subject has ingested. And in case of alcohol poisoning death, where you might have to see some kind of metabolite that is there or not, and ultimately you can you can know the reasoning if the BAC is around greater than 300 mg percent or not, if you calculate the amount of drug alcohol in the body or estimated amount of the dose of alcohol ingested. So there are a lot of uh, population data is there. So, uh, so to sum up, there are certain charts are there which generally gives you a primary information. But however, there is a lot of variabilities there in the BSC calculations, so specifically uh, like person which is having a liver dysfunction is that. So BSC will be much, much higher because the elimination rate, because the, the liver is the main metabolizing enzyme, is compromised. In that case, uh, 
the elimination the elim elimination rate of the, in the blood is generally taken at 8 to 10 the elimination rate from the whole body is generally 4 to 5 so these are the approximation values calculated from the uh, from the from the various population data and you have yeah, these are the values which is readily given so that to ease the calculation because for every person the values are actually different and you cannot estimate but you can take these values from the chart these are physiological derived values and you can put it but after all you have to justify the condition in which it is there like treatment with enzyme inhibitors like alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor for me brazil so this uh this type of drug is there the consumption of the moderated dose of the alcohol in the healthy to overnight so where the consumption is moderate in the healthy over after an overnight fast within if if, if it has taken the alcohol after an overnight fast the night it was fast and the day immediately taken what will the what will the elimination then rate in the body then consumption rate of the alcohol in the non-fasting condition, the healthy volume alcohol to reaching the intoxicating, <coughs> eco consumed altitude to reach intoxicating, such as in case of drunken driver cases, the, where the BAC, uh, the elimination rate is also depending on the somewhat uh, on the BAC level. If the BAC is very high, greater than 120, then you have to put the elimination rate of this. So overall, these are the sum uh, uh, to calculate the calculate the, calculate the back date, back time or BSC. You may have to take these values judiciously and put an estimate the alcohol concentration at the time of the crime or after or the very at the back in the time. This chart where the BSC and this chart is more simplified. So after you know the situation, but if the person is a normal healthy volunteers, and then this chart is applied with alcohol concentration, suppose 50 mg person, and the body weight is something 60. Ethanol in the whole blood, uh, whole body is something this, and the metabolism over the period of three over is six. Then with this pad, this chart has already calculated and given you that if it is ingested person, BAC is 50, then total alcohol consumed is 27 gram. So this way, if the weight is 100, then it is a 45, uh, 45 gram. So this chart uh, is readily available in the literature as well as in the forensic test book probably. And the British forensic, uh, um, they have uh, this charts available. So that at a quick glance, you can estimate how much of the alcohol was consumed. This is retrograde or the forward extrapolations where the hour has lapsed after the traffic of offense is there. Suppose there's a traffic offense and, the, uh, and he's in the custody. Suppose it's two hours and the estimated BAT during the, during, the test, during the custody period was 50. So what is the spread of estimated BAC? So what is the what what was the spread in which um, the BSC would be there when the when the BSC was calculated just after two hours after consumption of alcohol? So similarly, after eight hours, what will the spread of BSC? So the, all these calculations are done with the equations that I have shown earlier. So with the, to summarize, alcohol is a psychoactive substance and is actively depending on the BSC. Various factors of ADME and subsequently affecting the BSC has to be considered uh, to estimate the total amount of alcohol that has been consumed. And BFC determination in that way can be converted to the amount of alcohol consumptions. Um, so this is a forensic importance and we have to estimate certain biomarkers which are usually uh, usually the metabolites of alcohol which are very slowly eliminated from the systemic circulation. So these are the, some of the references. The United Kingdom, um, they have uh, uh, United Kingdom and the Ireland Association of Forensic Toxicologists. And this is a re this is a, a article which summarizes that by Alan Jones, uh, we have beautifully uh, summarizes the alcohol pharmacokinetic profile. Okay, with this, uh, I end my presentation. Um, thank you, and just move to. Uh, okay. I think uh, I think if you have uh, any queries or questions or comments, we'll be happy to take. <laughs> Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, I think my my one question is: in metabolic study of uh, organic specimens such as hair, nails, 
uh, index specimens which extraction method would prefer solvent extraction or acidic uh, extractions for the analysis of any metabolic studies of drugs or in alcohol okay generally extraction process depends on the nature of the compound uh, and the distribution profile of the compound if uh, if the compound specifically if it's